Hey guys, welcome to another video. For today's video, we are going to be looking at a, another budget build. Okay, so in the past few videos, I have received a lot of comments from you guys regarding budget builds, cheap builds. I mean, like builds under 5,000 Rand and that type of thing. So basically, a lot of guys are asking, what would be a recommended budget build or what would be a good budget system to have a look at okay so when it comes to pcs so basically i realized that a lot of a lot of you guys are kind of switching over from like console to pc and it sometimes can be a bit difficult so with a console you they launch a game for a ps4 and you can play the game uh, with the xbox is the same thing they launch the game and they specifically make the game or they specifically make the game for the console in order to play at 60 fps or 30 fps i don't actually know what they have had a console for ages so i'm not entirely sure so when you're switching from console to pc so you need to look at what games are you what type of games are you looking to play um for example fps games first person shooters First person shooters are like Fortnite or Warzone or Apex. Um, in first person shooters, it's usually recommended that you have a system that can at least run it at 60 FPS. Obviously, you'd like more out of a system, but for a budget build, if you can get it to 60 FPS at least, then it's a worthwhile build. Um, and that sometimes becomes a problem. When you're playing a game like Fortnite, Fortnite can run on, on most PCs. Or if you're playing CSGO, CSGO, the system requirements for a game like CSGO is very low. The problem is, um, not all PCs are made equal. So, a lot of times, whatever game you're looking at, um, preferably check the, or whatever game you're looking to play, preferably check the minimum PC requirements. Um and then try and stick above that they do have usually have it recommended and usually the recommended is not too high so focus on minimum to recommended pc requirements recommended might be a bit high but minimum pc requirements at least um usually with my builds i try not to go uh too budget um a lot of guys have been asking me can i build a pc for 5000 you can 100 percent. the problem is uh, you're not going to be able to play all the games that you want to play. So, for minimum specs, I'd probably look at a 1050 Ti, a GTX 1050 Ti at least. Um, a CPU, uh, nowadays, the CPUs that are 6 cores, so you always keep an eye out for the 6 core CPUs, um, 6 cores or higher, so 6 cores, 6 threads, or 6 cores, 12 threads, or anything to that effect, um, are a worth worthwhile getting if you're able to get it usually the pcs with six core six thread cpus or six core 12 thread cpus usually go, sit at about ten thousand rand um it's recommended that you get 16 gigs of ram um a lot of the the more the higher end games start to struggle um are starting to struggle on eight gigs of ram so 16 gigs and above 100 percent. you don't actually need to go above I mean, some games will push 12. The problem is, when you're running a system with uh, Windows 10 operating system, any other Windows operating systems, the Windows needs, and it's one of the biggest differences between console and PC, Windows needs some resources in order to run. And Windows needs a lot more resources than what um, your operating system on your consoles need. So it's a little bit more res resource intensive. Um, so yeah, so when looking for CPUs, a lot of times Intel uh, will be a lot cheaper uh, because there's a lot more, especially the older Intels, there's a lot more in the market. But if you're looking at Facebook Marketplace or anything like that, keep an eye out for i5, 8th gen and higher. There are usually six cores, six cores, six threads. Um, and then you've got 9th gen, 10th gen and so on. And as you go up, the cores increase. Um, i3 I'd probably stay away from anything below an 8th gen CPU uh, you're limited 
So the 8th gen CPUs and the lower lower than 8th gen CPUs get four core eight uh, four core eight threads on the i7s, and then on the i5s you get four core four threads. Now in today's games that's not really enough, and you can play some games. You can play some of the most basic games, but as soon as you start looking at Warzone, which is mostly what I build PCs for, if a PC is able to run Warzone, then I'm happy, then it runs most games. Some of the other games that you look at, like Red Dead Redemption or Assassin's Creed, those things can run at 30 frames. It's, it's not too much of an issue, but when you're looking at online games, uh, Dota 2 is easy to run. So minimum system requirements is fairly low. Um, but one of the biggest ones is uh, Apex is in between. So if you had to, if I had to list them, um, CSGO is very easy to run. Uh, most systems you'll get 60 to 80 on a budget system quite easily. Then after that, you're looking at Fortnite. Fortnite, you want to push up the settings a little bit. Um, then after that, you're looking at Apex. And then after that, you're looking at Warzone. If it's able to one, run Warzone, and then obviously right at the end of that is Battlefield 2042, which, I mean, even some of the heavier systems struggle on. But I, I've managed to push out 56, 60 FPS on um, a 10, uh, GTX 1050, NVIDIA GTX 1050. So, yeah. So, if you're looking to put together a system, um, try stick to 8th gen and up. 8th gen and up, um, you can look at the Ryzen. So, the Ryzen 5, 1600s and that type of thing you can look at them they will function just fine but they can still be a bit pricey and there's a lot less of them in the market so sometimes you struggle to find them so yeah so for this video um we are going to be looking at a couple builds that i've done in the past what's that two weeks um we have missed out on some videos so uh, keep an eye out for them i will show you specs and costings things that you can keep an eye out for also understand that you don't need to look get the you can go you can have a look at a basic system so eighth gen and up basic system and you can always upgrade in the future so if it comes with a not a nice case or a like a 450 watt power supply you can look at upgrading it at a later stage so uh, thanks very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed the content and stay tuned because in the next videos i will be doing going through my uh, builds that i've done in the past two weeks and then we're busy with one at the moment and that'll be coming out soon as well so thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video